Hey friend, welcome back. And this is Homestead by the Highway. We are going to get the garden cage planted today. It is June 3rd or 4th. And I left this a mess last year. These I just brought in. I usually clean this all out because, and put cardboard down. I just threw a piece here because the walnut trees leave all this behind. The walnut trees got cut down. If you did not see that in another video, they had to come out for other reasons. So I just need to get this cleaned up and then I won't have that issue in the future. I have to get plants in. I am way overdue getting these plants out of these little plot pots. I did not start seeds this year. If you thought that you missed that video, it just wasn't in the cards, but I did go and get tomato plants, pepper plants, uh, cucumber plants, and all of that. And all of that is gonna fill this up. So come along and spend a little time with me this morning. It is a beautiful day and I tried to get out here early and we'll see how it goes before it gets roasting hot. Michigan has been about 90 degrees for the last four or five days with no rain. So thank you for joining me and let's get this garden cleaned up. This is just a very quick peek at what is going on in here. I have grass coming in and weeds and that's that piece of cardboard. That area won't be too bad. And I got a big bag of weeds back there. And all of this up here. I did bring in this vermiculite we picked up the other day. So we're going to get this all cleaned out quick. I'm going to fast forward through the cleanup and then we'll talk about the plants. I love having trees around and we did plant, I think 40 green giant something, uh, pine trees that we are putting up. Sorry, there's two beautiful hawks just flying around across the street. So this is what I'm not gonna miss about our walnut trees, is the squirrels hide them everywhere. But this one pulled up, that's a full walnut right there and it just sprouted and that's the tree I got. I could go plant this somewhere if I wanted a walnut tree but I don't. But otherwise, if it were something else, I would definitely go pop it out back uh, at the wood line for highway noise. But yeah, this I'm not going to miss. Last year's green pepper. I wanted to bring you back for just one second and show you. I did get this cleaned out. I did all of it. It took me less than 10 minutes. In this, I put one bag of fresh soil, but, and I was just putting a little bit of compost in it. But I wanted to show you, even below this is my natural dirt without having rain. I think we're on like nine or 10 days and it's been in the 80s and 90s. This all the way down I can dig with my hand. This is very loose, very like nice soil that I've been able to build up over the years. So this is like great because I was worried that it would be rock hard because I haven't watered it. I haven't done nothing to it at all. And it's really great soil. So I just wanted you to show you how good that was. I'm going to keep mixing in the soil. We'll bring you back when we actually plant. I have everything cleaned out. I went ahead and I set out kind of where I'm going to plant things. And I am totally cracking up. My mom and I pick up plants and then we split them. If we don't need four, we don't need two. Because neither, neither of us has a huge garden for stuff. And I ended up with no green peppers, no bell peppers other than red, which is completely fine. And it is, my mom only lives less than 
two miles from me. So we share stuff all summer long. If one of us does better than the other, we have extra that's coming in faster than the other person. But as I'm laying stuff out, I have a lot of hot peppers. I have some scorching hot butch tea peppers, which we don't even eat, but my husband loves to grow a really hot pepper. And uh, I have Hungarian hot wax peppers, which I've grown before. And I threw them in my freezer and I actually just got them out of the freezer and dehydrated them and turned them into a powder to throw in stuff that I make, make for my husband because he'll totally eat that. So I'm going to mix some with the salt and make a hot, like a hot pepper salt for him. We have those. I have the red pepper and then I have the Hungarian yellow or yellow wax pepper, banana peppers. That's what they are. So my pepper selection is a crack up, especially since I decided a couple years ago I was never growing peppers again because we don't really eat them that fast and I never get that many. They take up a lot of space for stuff that doesn't produce a lot for me, but I'm determined to grow them every year. But how I ended up with this crazy variety, I have no idea. That's what happens when you don't go and get all your plants at once or you don't do your own seeds so you know what you're growing. I have a ton of cucumbers that I'm going to get in and I'm going to do this whole side, this whole almost three quarters of the wall with cucumbers on that side. And then this whole side behind me in the past, I've done my cucumbers in this corner here. And then I've done uh, tomatoes down this. I am doing the whole thing of tomatoes. I'm going to plant them closer than they recommend. I'm going to do like a high intensity tomato planting one because I'm getting them in so late and two, I'm just going to see what happens. I did have one volunteer tomato that came up at the far end, which totally is cracking me up. I think that's my first volunteer ever. And it's a tomato and it's not even, I mean, I think my tomato stopped here last year. So, but we're going to let that one go. It decided it should grow there and I'm going to leave it there. I'm not even going to move it. But we're going to do Romas um, in the corner. Those ones get very viney. There's determinate tomatoes and indeterminate tomatoes. But the Romas are the ones that just go crazy and go everywhere. So I need, I want the corner space so that I can string them up and wrap them around in the corner. I have a tomato patio, which I am not sure what that is. We got that from, we have a nursery that, or a greenhouse that puts stuff out on flats inexpensive when they have overflow so I picked up this beautiful tomato patio tomato so we're going to put those in I have early girl tomatoes and then beefsteak tomatoes that we're going to get in so I'm going to put all of these I think in this section I might go over into that section just a little bit but I'm going to plant them pretty close and pretty intense so we're going to see what happens if it becomes too much I will pull one out or two because I have eight twelve 16 uh, pots total, plants total that I'm going to put in this area, which is totally not recommended, but we're going to do it anyways, because that's how it's going to go this year. So come along, we'll pop these in and then we'll go do the peppers on the other side. So I took a break and we ran into town. I got some more bags of soil to pop into these. I really want to wait, raise the level of this up. I could have gotten a drop or we could have went and picked up a load of soil. With my back being the way that it is, I am paying for convenience and buying the bags, and I'm okay with that. That way I can lift them in. They're nice, they're dry, they're fluffy, and I can put them in here and raise everything up. In the meantime, this above my head, because my garden cage is the way that it is, and it's 3.30 in the afternoon, the sun is blazing, I decided that I was going to bring a sheet out and hang it over my head for shade. So I think this is brilliant, in my own personal opinion. But remember, just we need to, we garden and we do things, but remember we got to take care of ourselves. Wear your sunscreen, try to stay in the shade the best you can, hydrate yourself, lots of water or what you use to hydrate. And, but the shade thing is a game changer. Just the little time that I was out here this morning, about 10 in the sun was a killer. And I knew there was no way I was going to get this finished today if I didn't figure something out. So this was what I did.
I just went and got a sheet and I clamped it on the edges and I'm so happy to know that it fits. I looked at getting a shape cloth to go over this and it was like $70 and I'm like, king size sheet, it fit, it barely fits, but we got it up there. So we're going to do this. We're going to get all this soil in here and then get these plants planted and I'm giving myself 45 minutes to make this project done tops because I have other things I need to do. It's Sunday afternoon. I worked yesterday. I normally work Saturday. So we're going to do this. I'm not going to keep you here for the whole 45 minutes. So we'll be back. We're over to the tomato side and I got all the peppers planted. It took me maybe three to five minutes. Maybe. I pulled out the tomatoes, but I want to show you what I'm going to do with them. So with tomatoes, all of the spurry stuff along the bottom is actually can produce roots. So I am going to snip these bottom ones and I'm going to bury this all the way up to here within one inch of that and let that all create a really strong root system because tomatoes get heavy and we want them to have a good structure and be a solid plant. And that way, as well as they can feed from the roots and feed all of that. So I'm gonna go through the tomatoes really quick and just snip off all the bottom leaves. If you hear a lawnmower, my, lawn, my neighbor is, is mowing this lawn. So, and I just looked at the weather report. We are not supposed to get rain for almost another 14 days. And we are on like day nine or 10 already. This is not normal for Michigan. So we are not used to that, some of you I know that watch the channel and subscribe are from places like Texas and that where droughting conditions are probably more of a norm, but that's not normal for me. So I am blessed. My daughter purchased me an irrigation system for out here and for Christmas and her and her husband gifted that to me. So I think I'm going to actually read up on that tonight and look at how to get that semi-installed so I can at least just hook up this, the hose to it. I do have the hose that we are able to drag out this far, which is great. But if I could leave that dripping either all night or I'm not sure, I'll have to read up on it. So if you have a, an irrigation system, I would love to know, do you leave your hose hooked up all to it all the time? Because we do use it to water our trees and stuff out back as well. So maybe some quick split or snappy on things though that's an official word in case you didn't know all right so let's get these trimmed up and get them in really quick i don't know where i pulled this from so i don't know which plant it is it's one of two it'll be near it These ones in the back corner are Beef Masters. They are a hybrid. Um, this is F1 hybrid, full sun. They are indeterminate, which means they are going to go everywhere. So I'm putting them back in the back corner. That way I can tie them up easily to my chicken wire uh, that we put on here to keep the deer out. So those are, that's why they're back there. It says flavorful, meaty fruit wedges, up to two pounds, and they are disease resistant, 80 days. So it is June. July, August. So the first week of September, I might have giant tomatoes. So should have gotten these out a couple weeks ago. We can't go much earlier than this though because of our frost season. And we don't have a very long growth season here, especially when mother nature this year has decided to have a snowstorm and then have it 80 degrees for two days and then have another snowstorm. I guess I shouldn't call it a storm. We got a dusting of snow that lasted a few hours. The next one that I'm gonna plant after the Beast Master is going to be an early girl tomato, matures in 52 to 62 days. So I'm glad I'm putting these up front a little bit more because I'll need access to them sooner. And these are also an indeterminate type, which means a vine type. These are disease resistant, 52 to 62 days to harvest. So that's what's going next. And I share this with you because I go back and watch these videos in case these little tags come up missing because the squirrels like to take them everywhere. Uh, that way I know what's where once they start producing. 
This next one I don't have a tag for and I don't know much about it. We got it from that greenhouse that puts stuff up front. It was called a patio tomato. And it looks more like a, a bush-like tomato to me, but I could be 100% completely wrong. We picked it up, we did not research it. So we're just gonna snip the things off and I hope to get a really good tomato out of it. So I also have four of those. And the last one I have is a Roma tomato. This one I love to, I will throw these in the freezer as I get them, if they don't come on like strong all at the same time. And then in October-ish, I will cook them all in a crock pot, cook them down into some sort of sauce. The sauce that I accidentally threw together last year from last year's tomatoes that were in the freezer is absolutely incredible. It's not a spaghetti sauce, but it's not a pizza sauce, but you could use it for either. It is yummy, yummy, delicious, and didn't really pay attention to what I was doing. So it'll be one of those, it tastes that good because the flavors of the season were that good. All I know is it was my tomatoes, my garlic that was in the sauce, and I think my, my peppers as well. I think I uh, did pep green peppers in it as well. So um, the onions weren't mine. So I really like it when I can use my own things. It just makes me feel good about it. Not that you can't buy things and feel good about it, but when you put all the work into it, it's great. So I'm gonna trim up these and we're gonna drop these all in. Okay, so we have everything planted. I am so happy. I want to water it, but I think I'm going to wait a little bit until the sun goes down just a little bit more because I don't want to cook the roots. I probably can do this side with the tomatoes here and then we will be good. I do need to get the peppers into those pots. That may not happen today because I want to clean up first. I don't want to see the cleanup tomorrow and then I can plant peppers really quick after work one night. But let me show you what we got. So sad and droopy, you can see the mess out here. That's why I want to get this cleaned up. Sad and droopy, but they will perk right back up. I have all these cucumbers all along here. We ended up with three varieties. And here are the banana peppers in this section here. Back there, I put the four red bell peppers. These are the poblano anchos coming around the side of this. And I decided I would pop one tomato on this side because they were going to get really crowded. So the beef masters that take the longest to grow are in the back corner. The early girl are there. And then I have the patio tomatoes that I know nothing about. And then my romas. So that's how the garden cage it's gonna be laid out this year. I'm going to find something to go in here, as well as I have a bunch of marigolds. I'll show you my little mess back here. I have those marigolds out there that I am going to plant all along the front of here. And I'll probably pop some in right here too, depending upon how many I have. But we will get those popped in here really quick so when I water tonight, that will be good. Here, you can see like my trimmings, I just, scrub those into the dirt they did not have any disease or anything so they can just compost in place and feed the soil back and just decompose right there if they were sick or had blight or anything like that i would have trimmed them and thrown them away and not left them out here but they'll be great right inside thank you so much for joining me friend and seeing what we're going to do with the garden cages here. I'm anxious to see how it's all going to grow out. I'm so thankful that we finally got it in. The shade cloth was the game changer. Had I not had that, I probably would have done one thing. You probably wouldn't even have made it through that. So that was a total game changer in this. And I'm just going to leave it up until this evening. And so it doesn't dry the soil out more while these are sitting here waiting for a big drink of water. Thank you so much. If you learned something, please give me a like down below. Subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more gardening and see how this all pans out because you know I planted these plants way too close and way too many of them in here. But we're going to go with it and see what happens. I'm very excited to see what we get out of it. And we will see you soon. In the meantime, I will pop a couple of my other videos up. I usually post about one video a week. And 
those will keep you hopefully content until the next video and we'll talk to you soon thanks friend bye